Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now football preview show. This is the white edition here. I am Sammy Taramina, blogger of Around the OAA, one of the hosts of Last Three Brain Cells, and a host of Between Terraminas on Orin Television. I'd like to welcome those hearing us on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orin Television and YouTube. This week we're going to talk the OA White. Of course, two weeks ago we talked about the gold. Last week we talked about the blue. And then next week we're going to talk the red. The OA is in four divisions this year. So let's break down the, the teams in the white division this year, starting with the Blackhawks of Bloomfield Hills. Now, Bloomfield Hills had a really special year last year. They won the blue, went undefeated, um, but ran into a buzzsaw known as Nobody Detroit Catholic Central in the first round. So here is Blue Bay Hills coach Dan Loria at the podium talking about the Blackhawks. First, I'd like to thank uh, Rochester again for hosting this. It's a great event to meet with the media all in one day and from there. Um, we're coming off a nice season last year. I'm um, graduating. We had a small senior class last year and a small junior class last year. Um, so this year we have a big junior class. It's going to be nice. The lower levels looks like our numbers are still going to pick up. So the future looks bright in that regard. Um, Though we have a few, not so many seniors this year, we've got some great leadership and two of our guys are up here and really led us to a really nice summer. We had a good camp this summer, we had good 7-on-7s, seven sevens. Um, so the offseason was good and um, going back to camp again, we were going to camp uh, every year until COVID hit, so we're going back to that, looking forward to that as well. And um, we're looking forward to just a great group of kids to coach. It's just fun to be around, they play hard, and as we all know, that's all we can ask for. They show up, they play hard for 48 minutes good things can happen to us. Um, I'll let them in introduce themselves. I'm Ahmad Taylor. I play tight end at the end. CJ Jackson, the quarterback. Thank you, and um, everybody stay healthy and have a good year. Players to know about with Boom Bay Hills, you got to look at, obviously, it starts and ends with the quarterback, CJ Jackson. Of course, he had a really nice year last year um, running the RPO slash spread offense for the Blackhawks. Um, Amon Taylor um, this year, he's going to take on a much bigger role as a tight end. Um, Aaron Zeekman is another wide receiver to watch for. Um, David Holland's up front on the lines. Um, very concerned about the running attack. Um, when you look at the Blackhawks defensively, they should be pretty good. Of course, Jack Friesen, of course, he was very instrumental in their win against Troy last year. So I caught up with Coach Loria to talk about the Blackhawks um, this upcoming season in my interview with him. Got the head coach of Blue Bay Hills, Dan Laurie. Of course, last season they went undefeated, of course, falling an old by Detroit Catholic Central in the first round. Um, talk about um, last season and looking at this season. I think um, last season, last season with the kids that are returning raised the confidence level in themselves and the ability of what they can what, what they can do and, and then set us up for trying to take that next step. Let's get in the playoffs, let's win a playoff game. And um, I'm, I'm I believe in my heart of heart that this is what's prepared us for this for the white division. Talk about being in the white. Of course, you were in the blue last year. Now in the white, tougher task. Yes, um, we were just talking about it over there. It's going to be week in and week out, you know. And it's there's no there's I don't want to say you ever take a you know laid back a little bit, but if you're not ready on a Friday night in the white, you're going to get it handed to you. So it's going to be a battle. And that's and that's what I know as a competitor. That's what I love about this group of kids. They're fun kids to coach, but they're competitive, and they look forward to that week in and week out at that level of competition. What are your expectations here, Coach? Um, our expectations is to compete for the division title and make the playoffs. Thank you very much, yeah, Coach. Thank you. When looking at Blue Bay Hills, the schedule this year is a much tougher task than last year. Of course, um, last year playing on um, a interesting schedule. Of course, their non-league game last year is Watford Kettering in the, first, in the um, last season. But when you look at the schedule this year, it is a much tougher road. Um, Opening up week one against Birmingham Sea Home, of course, the first meeting since 2017, of course, when um, Blue Bay Hills beat the Maples um, 21-19 back in 2017. It's going to be a very interesting matchup. Um, battle two very good quarterbacks between um, Colton Kinney and um, CJ Jackson. That's going to be a very interesting matchup. Week two, they take on Stony Creek. This is the first meeting since 2016. Um, where um, Blue Bay Hills beat Stony Creek 35-16 back in 2016, but the coaching staff of Stony Creek is much different now than it was la than it was th prior than than that they um, 
than it was in um, prior's past. So week three, open up league, open up league play, take on Rochester. Of course, Blue Bay Hills is three and one against the Falcons in their last four meetings. So that's going to be a very interesting matchup there. Um, week four, they take on Groves. Of course, this is the first meeting since 2018 when the Blackhawks um, fell to the Falcons 49 to seven. Um, so it'll be a very interesting matchup there. September 23rd, they take on Oak Park. Um, I remember that game um, in 2017 when it was a high scoring affair when that one went 58-39 in favor of the Knights in that one. Um, week six, they take on Southfield. Um, when you look at this one, the last time these two teams met, the Warriors put 60 points on them um, in a 60-12 blowout at Bluebeer Hills back in 2019. Week seven, they take on Harper Woods, of course. Um, it's the first meeting between these two teams, of course. Um, Harper Woods, new to the league. Um, week eight, they, go, they take on Oxford. It's the first meeting since 2019 when the um, Wildcats knocked out the Blackhawks 42-21. Um, interesting matchup um, of two different styles. Of course, Oxford's a team that likes to, um, you know, there are multiple teams, so I'll be curious to see what happens there. And then they close out the week nine, taking on North Farmington, of course, um, that's the first meeting for between these two teams. So it's going to be a tough task for, Co for um, Coach Dan Laurie and Blue Bay Hills this year. Um, when you look at it here, the schedule, it is, it, it is pretty vicious when you look at the Blackhawks um, this upcoming season. So, you know, for Blue Bay Hills, you know, the, my question for them is, are they ready for this challenge? That is the big time question for Blue Bay Hills this season. Let's go now from Blue Bay Hills. Let's go to Groves now. Of course, when you look at the Falcons, what the heck happened to them last year? I mean, it was a um, it was a struggle last year for them. So here's Coach Brendan Flaherty at the podium talking about the state of the Falcons. Uh, first, I want to thank Coach Vernon and Rochester and everybody else. I think Coach Vernon, I like your comments at the start of the. Uh, that was really good. That's that's uh, hit home, and, and I think you're right. You look around the room. There's a lot of men that are real similar, real different in a lot of ways too. Um, but similar, I think, it for the right reasons. The media. Thanks for making high school football important, high school sports. I look at the men in front of me, and it's like uh, lots of different uh, age groups and, and years doing it, but you make high school sports important. I appreciate that, and I know our guys appreciate it. I'm going to give the mic to my guys, and let them introduce themselves first. Morgan Goldberg, O line, D line. Malachi Coleman, D line. Elias Kendra, full back and linebacker. These guys are uh, three of my 23 seniors. I think everybody in here will probably agree at some point in time that you're as strong as your senior class. We're real encouraged about our senior class. Looking for a good bounce back year. Um, just want to wish everybody good luck. Unless when you play on us, of course, and uh, everybody stay healthy. Thank you. When looking at the Falcons this year, their strength this year is senior leadership. Of course, they do got a lot of experience coming back. But I'm curious to see how this combination of Caden Hardy and Zach Rogers is going to go this year. Of course, um, when you look at Caden Hardy, he was a freshman last year, um, had some struggles um, early on. Um, Zach Rogers, we know about his father. We know about the legacy he has. Um, the question for me with Groves is going to be is, can they bounce back? That's the big question. They have a very good line up front, led, of course, by Alex Kojner, Avery Gash, um, and Isaiah Tom, Tomlin, those are names to watch for. Um, defensively, watch for Elias Kendra. Um, that is a name to watch out for a linebacker. Um, Jackson Crane is another one as well. Um, and Max Young as well. So, but I'm curious to see where Groves finds that balance, particularly in the running game. So I caught up with Coach Flaherty to talk about the Falcons um, in an interview with him. I got Groves Coach Brennan Flaherty here. Coach, um, last season was a really rough year for you guys. Um, what have you guys have done this off season? Well, we just kind of keep guys together and you know correct our mistakes. You know, you got to grow as coaches as well. I mean, bad play is also bad coaching. So working together, a uh, big thing for us is getting guys more experience. You know, and just showing those things up. Talk about the um, talk about Caden. Obviously, your quarterback last year going to be a sophomore this year. Um, how's he been doing? He's fantastic. I think he started getting into a groove, and, you know, that's sometimes bad luck happens. You know, he broke his arm in the fourth game just when he started to find his stride. Uh, so we had to kind of rebuild and start all over. Uh, Max Young shorted up, did some great stuff for us to end the season. Uh, but having Caden back for the full year will be awesome for us, and uh, we're expecting good results. What are your expectations here, Coach? Uh, our expectation is beat our crosstown rival, uh, make the playoffs. Thank you real much, Coach. Thank you. 
When looking at the schedule for Groves, this is going to be interesting. Of course, it's, it's not an easy schedule for Groves this year. Um, open up the year, Adam, against North Farmington at home in Beverly Hills. Of course, last season, um, Groves lost 49-0 at Highland Field last season to the Raiders. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Um, two teams that are in similar paths, um, you know, just trying to find an identity. So that'll be very interesting there. Week two. They travel to Oxford to take on the Wildcats. Um, this is going to be a very emotionally charged game. Um, 7.30 kickoff. First meeting between these two teams. Um, curious to see how this game's going to be. Um, you know, when you look at the emotion that Oxford's going to have, it's, it's their first home game. So it's going to be really interesting there. Um, it's going to be an interesting matchup, to say the least, between the Wildcats and the Falcons. Um, week three. They're at Oak Park at Night Valley. Of course, um, when you look at this matchup here, um, Oak Park won, I mean, Groves won 22-14 last season over Oak Park. Um, it's always interesting when games are at Night Valley because it's a 6 p.m. start. Um, so that'll be very interesting um, in that matchup. It's the first league game for both the Knights and the Falcons. Um, week four, Bootville Hills and the road, of course. It's the first meeting since 20, 2018 when, um, Groves knocked off Bloomfield Hills 49-7. Um, week 5, they take on Southfield. Um, the last time these two teams played was in 2021 um, when the Warriors beat the Falcons 33-7. Um, um, week 6, they take on Harper Woods. This is the first meeting since 1961. These two teams have met before. That game was won by Groves 25-7 over Harper Woods. So it'll be very interesting, of course, in that matchup between the Pioneers and the Falcons. First meeting since 1961. Um, October, the um, week seven, of course, I saw October the 7th, they take on Rochester at Rochester. Of course, the Falcons won the last two meetings over the Falcons. Of course, um, of course, both teams are named Falcons, so Groves has won the last two meetings over Rochester. Um, week eight, they travel to Hurley to take on Berkeley. It's the first matchup since 2014, um, or 2017, when um, they won 24 zip over um, the Bears. Um, so that will be a very interesting matchup there. And then to close out the year um, for um, Groves, they take on arch rival Seaholm. Last season, they are um, they've won um, six of the last nine against Seaholm, but they won 21-14 last season over the Maples in the Maple Forest. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, of two arch rivals, of course, down in um, in Beverly Hills this year. So it'll be very interesting to see what Groves has this year. Um, a lot to look forward to. Um, concerns that the run, rushing attack is a big question mark for me. Um, Groves to be in for a bounce back year this year. So I'm curious to see how the Falcons do this upcoming season. So let's go now from Groves. Let's go to the new team in the block, which is the Harper Woods Pioneers. Um, when you look at the Pioneers this year, last season they had a good, great year. Um, but they ran into River Rouge in the first round of the postseason, lost that one in overtime. So here is Coach Booker at the podium, defensive coordinator of the Pioneers, of course, replacing Rob Olden at Media Day this week. So here is Coach um, Booker at the podium. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, and foremost, I want to thank uh, Rochester for inviting us out to the OAA. They also invited us out last year. We had a great time. Uh, I'd like to say hello to everybody from our head coach in his absence today. I'm going to let the players introduce themselves and I'll talk about our outlook for the 2020 season. Kayla Scott, I'm Sam Lumber. My brother is Paul Leafs in the Law. Jacob Boyle, Seabury. Justin Johnson, Office of Law. Willie Powell, Hardbacker. All right, uh, I'm Coach Booker, I'm the defensive coordinator. Uh, recruiting coordinator. Uh, our, our 22 season is going to be um, a great experience. It's our first year coming to the OAA. Um, we also get to play against you know teams that's twice our size in enrollment. So it's going to be a real fun, challenging year. Um, our strength of our team right now is our linebacker court. Those two beat guys have both all played on some type of level in varsity football. Um, our question marks for this year is our quarterback and running back position. We did graduate both guys um, to great to great universities. Um, and like I
like I said, our adjustment, our adjustment, biggest adjustment is playing the OA and Mike. Uh, and these are our guys. We look to have a great season, stay healthy. Hope everybody stay healthy. Thank you. Players to watch for on Harper Woods this year when you look at the Pioneers. Everything starts and ends with Jacob Bolden, of course, a three-year starter at wide, at um, cornerback. He probably plays some wide receiver as well. Um, obviously got Kalen Scott at linebacker as well. Um, watch Willie Powell as well. I mean, like, I think he's going to be a big-time factor on defense. Um, you got J Jensen Johnson up front, and then you got um, Romney House as well. That's another name to watch for as well. So Harper Woods' is strength, you know, linebacker, linebackers, Defensive secondary, wide receivers, big time um, strength for the Pioneers coming in the year. But when I talked to um, when I talked to um, Coach and Booker, we talked about um, we talked about what the um, weaknesses are going to be for Harper Woods and how things is going to be for how life is going to be in the white for the Pioneers. I got defensive coordinator Coach um, Coach Booker here. Of course, um, Harper Woods officially in the OAA. Um, Coach. Um, How's your quarterback and running back situation going? Uh, it's going great. Uh, we have a returner. Our returner quarterback would be probably our JV quarterback from last year. Um, his strengths, he can, he can throw it, he can run. Um, running back will be done by committee going into the 22 season. Um, really going to be able to see in the next couple of days uh, when training camp start who will really, uh, you know, come out and rise up on top and, you know, take that spot. How about your schedule? Of course, you open up with Chandler Park. Um, that's a backyard brawl, of course. Um, that's going to be a very interesting matchup. So talk about your schedule, how life is going to be in the old, in the white. Um, I think that, you know, our schedule this year, we're opening up with uh, Chandler Park in our backyard brawl, trying to do some community work, uh, build a community up in football for both schools. And then going back and coming to the white, playing Southfield and Oak Park, uh, playing a lot of schools that are twice our size in enrollment is our challenge. Um, we don't have uh, 835 kids in our school, and playing schools with 1,600 to 2,000 kids is going to be a, a different challenge where we don't have those numbers to be able to play with. So it's going to be a challenge, but I think we're re up to the uh, challenge for sure. What are your expectations here, Coach? Um, to play hard, uh, make a deep run in the playoffs, and compete on the top on the top level and get through the OA season. Thank you real much, Coach. Thank you. Harper Woods did experience an enrollment hike this year, so now when you look at them in the postseason, they're going to be in Division Two. And they're going to also be in Class A for the rest of the sports. So when you look at the Pioneers on a schedule basis, Harper Woods has always played a tough schedule. There's, there's no doubt. Even as an independent and even when the Michigan um, Metro Athletic Conference they were in for a couple years. Um, when you look at the schedule this year, they open up at Harper Woods Chandler Park Academy at the Backyard Brawl. Um, it's going to be very interesting. It's the first meeting since 2009 when the Pioneers won over the Eagles 15 to 12 in that one. And then week two, they head to the Swamp to take on the Lakers of West Bloomfield. It's the first meeting between these two teams. It'll be, there's going to be a lot of athleticism in that matchup. Um, so I'm curious to see how, what team, um, can Harper Woods, you know what I mean? Like, um, especially, especially with their quarterback running game issues. Um, can they find those, um, can they find that quarterback, can they find that running back? Because it's going to be a really tough matchup week two against the Lakers of West Bloomfield. Week three against Southfield Arts and Tech, it's at home, it's on grass. Um, Harper Woods had the grass stadium. Um, it'll be a very interesting matchup. I think this has got shootout potential written over it. Um, I think that both teams are going to be very sound offensively. Uh, both teams are going to be... You know, I'm curious to see how Southfield is defensively in this matchup, um, especially playing in grass, um, being in, um, being at Harper Woods. It's going to be very interesting. It's the home opener for Harper Woods as well. As a, um, so it'll be very interesting to see how that matchup goes there. And then week four, they take on Oak Park. This is the first meeting since 1964 um, where they lost 33 nothing. They've lost three straight meetings to the Knights. So this is going to be a very, very interesting matchup, even though every, it's, it is the first, technically it is the first meeting between league, league foes, but these two programs have met, I mean like, the, they have met before. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup to see what happens here between the Pioneers and the Knights. It's going to be a very interesting matchup there. Week 5, they travel to Rochester to take on the Falcons, it's the first meeting between the Pioneers and the Falcons. Um, very curious to see how this matchup is going to go. 
Week six, they go to Beverly Hills. This is the first meet since 1961, of course, where they lost 25 to seven. So it's gonna be a very interesting match up there. Um, week seven, they take on Blue Bay Hills, the first meeting between these two teams. Um, here's to see how the Pioneers defensively, go, how they defend C.J. Jackson. Very curious on that one. Week number eight at Rochester Adams, of course. Adams got all that experience coming back. Um, they, they run the veer. I don't know if the Pioneers have seen a, a team that's run the veer as effectively as Adams will run it. I mean, it's gonna be a really daunting challenge for um, Coach Oden and the Pioneers. And then week nine, they close out the year against a very good Roseville team. Um, Roseville, the Panthers are solid. It is the first meeting between these two teams. So for Harper Woods this year, it's gonna be a challenge for them coming into the league. Um, seeing how they can do, how they can compete. Um, it's going to be a challenge, but they have enough athletes, enough athleticism. I think they're going to be a big time player in this division this season. So that is my take on Harper Woods. I think Harper Woods, you know, first time in the league. I know they're not in Oakland County, they're in Wayne County, but, um, but I think Harper Woods, I think they're going to be, they're going to be just fine this season. So I expect a lot from the Pioneers this upcoming season. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, let's go now from Harper Woods. Let's go to Oak Park. Um, when you look at the Knights here, Oak Park had a really rough year after, I remember the 2020, the, um, 2020, um, I mean like that season where they had an incredible postseason run where they got to the Division II state semifinals, finished the year 0-6, but with everybody making the playoffs last year, that year, they made a special run when they got whole. Um, so here's Coach Greg Carter at the podium talking about the Knights. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be back. Uh, I'm going into my 12th season in the OAA. Um, I've coached in some really difficult leagues, and OAA, like I been mentioned before, is an outstanding league with a lot of great competition each and every week. Uh, one of the things that we've learned uh, about the league is if you happen to lose on, on a Friday, you know, a lot of people dwell on losses. You better forget it. Um, a bit of advice, uh, get back to work, because if you dwell on it too long, you'll wind up losing the next week because the competition is so great. Um, we um, are looking for an outstanding season. We're really excited about our young men. Um, the last couple years, we've been a little down. Uh, these guys have fought through some tough battles and some tough situations, and we're really proud of them. Uh, they worked extremely hard all summer trying to re regain some of the, the things that we've done in the past. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. i got a great group of guys. I'm going to let them in introduce themselves. Darrell Washington, defensive end. Damian Bayesley, linebacker. Miles Burrell, O-line, D-line. Durante Harris, quarterback. Thank you. Uh, one party uh, note, um, we're looking forward to playing uh, a great schedule this year. We open up with UAD, uh, and we also play Orchard Lake, so those are our non-league opponents. We're re really excited to represent uh, the OAA in those uh, contests. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. When you look at the night strength this year, of course, it's the team speed on both sides of football. Question marks coming in is, is offensive line in the quarterback spot. It's not an easy, you know, there's some question marks there. Um, players to watch for, obviously, you got James Blaylock, Blaylock, Rashard Lewis, Timothy Squire, Devonta Harris, Julius Stewart are guys to also watch for, along with Darnell Boone, Daryl Washington, um, Damian Baisley, Miles Brunel are other guys to watch for this year for the Knights. Um, when you look at the Knights this year, they had some struggles. I mean, it was a it was a big time struggle for them this year. So I talked to Coach Carter um, about the struggles last year, about what is the outlook is for the Knights heading into the season. I got legendary Coach Oak Park, Coach Greg Carter here. Nice coach, it's nice to see you yeah, again. Have a great summer. I've had a great summer. Good. Um, coach, um, how is everything going at Oak Park? I mean, like you know, how's the quarterback situation going? Yeah. How's everything been going? They're working extremely hard. Um, of course, they don't have the experience that I would like them to have, but they're talented kids, and they're still competing for the position. But, um, you know, I think that position will be all right. Unfortunately for us, we haven't had a two-year quarterback since DeWine Mathis. So every year has been a different quarterback. So that's 
you know, hopefully we can get off to a good start and he can build some confidence and we can go from there. Talk about your team, obviously Darnell Boone. I mean, like, when you look at him, um, he's been a big player to know about for you guys. How's he been doing? He's been doing well. He's actually uh, playing some strong safety for us and running back. Uh, I expected him to be here with me today, but he didn't make it. Um, but he's, he's doing well. He's uh, doing good in school. He's really worked out hard. We've had a great summer as a group, so and that, he, that includes him. So I'm excited about you know the things that he's going to provide for us this year. What is the expectation this year, Coach? Huh? Is that expectation. Uh, we expect to win. We always expect to win. Um, you know, if we can get to a, off to a good start and our kids can gain some confidence because we we lost a lot of seniors, um, you know, we'll be fine. And I think we we're going to play the kind of defense that will give us a chance to win all these games. So. One more question: um, your schedule. Um, talk about your schedule. That's brutal. You yeah, know, love it, love it. Um, you know. Um, if you can't beat some of those teams, then you don't deserve to be in the playoffs. So we always look at it that we can find out what our weaknesses are against those great teams. You know, the first two games in particular uh, against UAD and against Lake Orion, that's going to be crazy. You know, so we'll find out how good we are and what we need to work on. So hopefully we can get some wins in you know, those two games and, and keep moving from there. Thank you real much, Coach Carter. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank yep. you. I like the quote from Coach Carter going all Ric Flair. To be the man, you got to beat the man. And when you look at the schedule, that is a vicious schedule. Um, when you look at opening up the year at home in Night Valley against UAD Jesuit, um, that is a brutal, brutal matchup. Um, curious to see how this match is going to go. Of course, um, they won 26-17 back in 2017. This is the first meeting between these two teams. Um, so it'll be a very interesting matchup to say right there, though. Week 2. Um, it's Lake Orion um, on the road in Dragon Country. The Knights have lost five straight games to the Dragons. Um, it's last five straight meetings to the Dragons. So I'm curious to see how this matchup is going to be. Of course, Lake Orion um, looking for a bounce back year after um, struggling last season. Um, week three, taking on Groves. Of course, Oak Park is four and two against the Falcons in the last six meetings. Um, and then week four, they take on Harper Woods on the road. Um, Oak Park is 2-0 all time against Harper Woods, the last meeting being in 1961. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup there. Um, week number five, they are at Bloomfield Hills. Of course, the first time these two teams have met since 2013 when, um, when the Knights won 31-0. So that'll be a very interesting matchup. Bloomfield Hills is a much different team than they were back then. Um, week number six, they take on Rochester. Um, Rochester, I mean, Oak Park won four the last five meetings against the Falcons. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup there. And then week number seven, they take on Southfield Arts and Tech. Of course, um, they won 42-28 last season in Night Valley. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup there. October 14th, it does say question mark on there, but it is Orchard Lake St. Mary's. They are playing. It's the first matchup since 2013 that the Eaglets and the Knights have played, um, where Oak Park won that one 25-20 back in 2013. And then October 21st, they take on Clarkson at home. Last season, um, it, the Knights fell to 50-28 last season. Um, so it's gonna be, Oak Park and Clarkson are no strangers to one another. They have played each other before. Um, so when I look at the Knights schedule, it is vicious, um, it is tough, it is very, very difficult coming into the year. So for Coach Greg Carter, he is used to playing these type of schedules. Um, so when you look at Oak Park, they will be ready to go this year. So I expect the Knights to be ready to go. But I'm not sure how that schedule is going to look at this year when it looks at the record and the projections coming into the year. So that's my take on Oak Park. Let's go now from the Knights to the Falcons of Rochester. Of course, Rochester is 11-5 the last two years, have had a ton of success. Um, but the issue for them has been their city rivals. So here's Coach Eric Vernon at the podium talking about the Falcons coming in the season. Uh, let's start off. I'm going to have these guys introduce themselves before we get into uh, some of the other stuff. Jay Bogan, DB receiver. Alex Bueno, quarterback. Drew Trenzi, O line, D line. Money Paws, tight end, DM. Grant Calcagno, uh, running back, uh, receiver, and DB. Coach, so a uh, couple things about these guys. Um, they are, just like I'm sure everybody else here, they're great leaders. Um, they bring back a lot of experience. Um, the guys that started for us last year, 
Um, but not just on the field, off the field, just the quality of the young men that they are. Um, they all do great in the classroom. They all have high three-point GPAs. Um, they're multi-sport athletes, play basketball, track, wrestle for me. Um, and so it's awesome when you have your leaders and the, some of the best returning players also being multi-sport athletes. It's a great example that they set. Um, and on top of that, they're the hardest workers we have. And so we always talk about trying to have your best players be your hardest workers, um, and they certainly do that. And I'm excited for this year. Um, you know, we returned, we had a decent year last year. We lost a really great senior class. We have a lot of good kids coming back. We got some younger sophomores, hopefully, that can kind of fill in. And uh, in the junior class, where um, we have guys ready to work. And uh, you know, I think strengths coming into the season, again, is just the leadership. Um, and, and the strength of the senior class we have coming back. Uh, some of the weaknesses, I think, is just depth. Like everybody else, we you know we got to find some of the younger guys, hope that they can step up quickly um, and, and kind of understand how, how to do things and play tough and physical. If we stay healthy, hopefully we have uh, the year that we're looking forward to. Um, but, but again, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Thank you to all the teams. Um, you know, this year, it, the schedule is just a grind. Week in and week out, it's a grind. Coach Carter said it. If you stop and think too long about the previous week, the next week will catch up to you. And so um, it's really a testament to the kids here, their ability each week to focus, work hard, and continue to do the things that they got to do to, to be the best players and the best team they can be. So uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out and uh, looking forward to this year here at Rochester. When you look at the players coming back for Rochester, quarterback play is huge. When you have a three-year starter now, Explano coming back. you got Grant Calgano at running back, Jaden Bone at wide receiver. Duke Terenzi leading the lines along with Tristan, Bar Tristan Barnett as well. Um, Adrian Ozentoski is another wide receiver to watch for. Um, Kamani Potts at defensive end. Um, you know, Noah Purchase at, at a linebacker. And Royce Winters also on the line as well. So when you look at Aiden Ozentoski also handling the putting duties. So when you look at Coach Vernon's um, schedule, when you look at Coach Vernon this year, I mean, like, you should be balanced. I mean, Rochester's got... A lot of balance coming back, but when I look at when I look at Rochester um, this upcoming season, if you want to be in the playoffs this year, you have to beat your city rivals. So I caught up with Coach Vernon to talk about the state of the Falcons this season. I got Rochester coach Eric Vernon here, of course, Coach. Um, last season you had a lot of success, but talk about your struggles against your city rivals, Adams and Stony Creek. Yeah, you know it's it. They're... They're great programs, and I think everybody struggled against Adams last year. They had, they got, they had a great team, great coach staff, and it's just it's we're that's you know they set the bar, and all three schools in the community work hard to try to compete against each other, beat each other, and that's you know it's there. We keep working at it. So, talk about your um line. I mean, obviously the the lines, obviously that's been one of the big concerns. Daps is another one. Um, how are how has that been going along? So you. With the line, we got Drew Terenzi coming back, who was starting center for us last year. So that's good to have the guy in the middle as the anchor. And you know, we're not huge size-wise. We got some guys that are tough and kids that work hard. And it's just a matter of filling them in and trying to get a run game going, where they all understand who they're supposed to block, when they're supposed to block, and getting them firing off low and being physical. You know, we got pieces that can certainly fit together. It's just finding the right spot for them. Um, and so, you know, we got. The good news is I think our skill positions are some of the best skill positions we've had in, in years that I've been here. Um, and maybe that hopefully might make up for a little bit up front, at least at the start of the year. But we'll see. You know, hopefully our guys kind of come along and, and, and are playing. And our defense line, Kamani Potts, he's kind of an anchor as a defensive end. He's, he's your prototypical bookend DN, and he does a great job rushing the pass or stopping the run. So if we can build off from that, it should be hopefully successful. How has Alex been doing? Oh, he's a plus. I mean, he, you know, he started as a as a freshman a couple games for us. He's worked hard. He's gotten bigger. He's gotten stronger. You know, he's a near 4.0 student in the classroom, multi-sport athlete. He's a great leader. Um, you know, it's nice to have that signal caller. And he last year he came into his own a lot as a runner. He became a really good dual threat guy for us. And just that added dimension of of being able to run the ball is going to be huge for us. So. He's great. Get, keep him healthy, and he's going to make plays for us. He, I, he'll be one of the top signal callers in the area, if not the state, for sure. What is your expectation this year, Coach? I, expectation, same. We talk about winning the league, beating our rivals in the league, you know, in the, in the city, beating Adams, beating Stoney, making playoffs, winning playoff games, and just having a great, great experience for our guys. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. When you look at Rochester this year, I talked about the, beating the city rivals. Um, 
And when you look at that schedule, it looks very interesting. Open up the year with Utica. Of course, Rochester's won three straight meetings against the Chieftains. Um, this is an interesting matchup. Um, Utica is due for a bounce back year this year. I know they were a postseason team a year ago. So that'll be very interesting there in that matchup. Um, I think Rochester matches very well with Utica. Um, so that'll be very interesting in that one. Week two, it's Rochester Adams. They have not beaten Adams since 1996. That's 24 straight games. That's insane. I mean, you know, when you're city rival, when you haven't beaten a team 24 straight, I mean, including the postseason. Um, when you look at this year's matchup, it's a very difficult matchup for Rochester going against Adams. Of course, Adams was a team that made the um, Division One State Finals last season. They run the Veer. A uh, lot of experience coming back. So it's going to be a challenge for Rochester against Adams, especially up front. I think that's where I think the big problem could be for Rochester in that game. Um, week three, they head to Bloomfield Hills. Of course, it's the first meeting since 2020 where, Bloom, where Rochester won that one 42 to 20 back in 2020. That was at Rochester. Of course, this year it's at Bloomfield Hills. Week four, they head down to Southfield to take on the Warriors. Of course, the, this is the first time these two teams have met since 2018 where the... Um, Falcons um, lost 39-7 in that one. Um, week 5, they take on Harper Woods at home. It's the first meeting between the Pioneers and the Falcons. Um, week 6, they take on Oak Park. That game was absolutely crazy last year at Rochester. Um, where um, Rochester won that one 23-22. It was a really close game. Really good game. Um, big win at the time for the Falcons at that time. Um, October 7th, they take on Groves. Of course, is another one that... Rochester won last season. They knocked off Groves 32-22. Um, was the first win in four tries against them last year. And then week number um, eight, they go to Stony Creek. Um, Rochester's really struggled against Stony Creek, of course. One and three in their last four games. Um, last year, they lost 14-7 to the Cougars. And also, Coach Nick Merlo is, of course, a former Falcon, of course, playing at Rochester. His dad coached at Rochester. Um, so this is going to be a very interesting matchup between the Falcons and the Cougars in that matchup. And then week number nine, they close out the year at Detroit Renaissance. Of course, the first meeting between the um, Falcons and the Phoenix. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup right there. So for Rochester this year, a lot of experience, especially at the skill positions. Questions up front. Very curious to see where Rochester goes this upcoming season. Um, let's go now from Rochester to Southfield Arts and Tech. When you look at the Warriors last year, um, here's a team that's got, um, I look at Mich former Michigan football coach Rich Rodriguez. You had the offense, defense, special teams. Last year, the Warriors were really good early. La and then they fell off. You know, last four games, they allowed over 48 points a game. They're, they got the offense down, defense, special teams, big question. So here's Southfield coach Aaron Marshall at the podium talking about the Warriors. Thank you, Coach Vernon um, and Rochester for hosting us. Um, I'm going to let the players introduce yourselves first. Isaiah Marshall, QB. Xavier Burt, running back. Xavier Davis, O line, D line. Tashi Brace, the wide receiver. Devon Buskin, DB. Richie Darner, D line. Um, these guys work. Uh, extremely hard this offseason. This is the first full offseason we've had together. I'm going on my second year as a head coach. Um, I'm really excited um, about the future for us. Um, last year we had 15 seniors, um, really low amount of seniors last year. We started about 10 sophomores. So we got a, a huge group um, that came back. So I'm really excited um, to see the future. Um, I pray everybody stay healthy. Um, good luck in two days and come out of two days very healthy. Our two non-conference games, week one, Cass Tech, week nine, River Rouge. Thank you very much. When you look at the Warriors, the players to know for this year, obviously Isaiah Marshall, they did get a transfer in there from Birdman Brother Rice as well. Um, they have Tachi Beautiful as well. They have Davia Bird at running back. You got Jay Van Jones, Aaron Bradley. Um, what, they got the line play as well, but when you look at the Warriors, they, they have the athleticism, they have the offense down. I am very concerned about that defense, very concerned about that. Um, their special teams, there's a lot of questions with that, with the Warriors in that area as well. 
So when you look at the schedule for A&T this year, um, they open up the year with Detroit Cass Tech. Um, that game last year, they lost 49-22 last season, so that's gonna be a really interesting matchup here. Of course, Detroit Cass Tech's one of the um, premier programs in the area, so it'll be very interesting. And, the, and both Southfield and Detroit Cass Tech are no strangers to one another. Um, week two, they take on Clarkston. Um, at Clarkson, of course, the Warriors are one in six in their last seven games against the Wolves, so that's going to be. So I'm curious to see how um, A&T matches up with Clarkson, particularly on the um, defensive end, especially because I think that that could be a shootout possible in that matchup there. Week three, they take on Harper Woods. It's the first meeting between the Warriors and the Pioneers. Um, it's a very interesting matchup there, and that one there. Um, week four, they take on Rochester, of course, on the Warriors have won two straight against the Falcons. So that one, you know, I'm curious to see how the Warriors defensively match up against Alex Bueno. Um, week five, they take on Groves, of course, a and won that one 33-7 last season um, behind a dominant performance by Isaiah Marshall in that one. Week six, they take on Bloomfield Hills, um, rematch since 2019 when the Warriors put up 60 on the... Um, Blackhawks and a 60-12 blowout at Bluefield Hills. Um, week seven, they take on Oak Park. I mean, like a and won two of the last three against Oak Park. So this is gonna be very, very interesting. Of course, these two are no strangers to one another. I'm curious about the coaching match between Aaron Marshall and um, Coach Greg Carter. Um, week eight, they play West Bloomfield. Of course, um, the Warriors are one and four against the Lakers in the last five games. Um, that is a... Um, going to be a very interesting matchup there and then week nine they close out the year with river rouge um southfield of course lost that one 45 44 last season so when you look at the warriors outlook this year expect a ton of shootouts um i i like their their offense is going to be very good concerns about their defense their special teams um so i expect the warriors this year to put up a bunch of points but the question is can they stop somebody that's the big question when you look at Southfield Arts and Tech this upcoming season. Okay, now let's go from my, um, look at my projections, of course, they're gonna be out already on the blog here. When I look at the division this year, um, it, everybody looks at Harper Woods and says, well, okay, can the Pioneers run the table? I think they got a great chance to do that. Um, I think Harper Woods can win seven games this year. I really like where the Pioneers are at this year. If they can find a quarterback, they can find a running back, I think they're gonna be just fine. A and T, I had them second at four and one in the league, um, four and five overall. That schedule is absolutely vicious. Um, when you look at A and T, I mean, like when you look at teams like Detroit, Cast Tech, Clarkston, West Bloomfield, River Rouge, that is an absolute brutal schedule. When you look at the Warriors, um, they're going to have some issues this year, I think. When you look at them, um, Bloomfield Hills, I had them third. I, I like C J Jackson at quarterback. I think they're going to be ready for the challenge. Um, I think, you know, when you look at, I, they're gonna, I, they're gonna, it's gonna be a rough year for them, I think, but I think they can win three games in this league. I think they can be just fine. Um, Rochester, I had them at four and five. Um, like I said, the city rivals, if they can knock them off, um, I think it'll be very interesting when they play Boompy Hills. Um, that'll be a really, I think that's a toss up game there. Groves with them, I know they're supposed to be better, but I just don't know if I can trust them right now with what, um, they have coming back and then Oak Park, um, yes, they're better. But when you look at that schedule, it is absolutely brutal. I mean, you look at the playing the likes of, you know, UOD Jesuit, Lake Orion, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, you know, and Clarkson, that is gonna, that's a very difficult non-league schedule. So when I look at Oak Park, um, it, I mean, they, they, they're gonna be better as a team, but I think record wise, it could be a very long year for them. But they could surprise me. I think Oak Park, you know, they have, they're more than capable, I think, of going up right now. They have the biggest upside in this division, but right now, when I look at the division right now, it looks like it's gonna come down to Harper Woods or Southfield Arts and Tech that wins that division. Now, when you look at the rankings to start, of course, we the rankings will be changed, obviously, but the preseason rankings, we have them out. Um, obviously, I have A&T at four, Harper Woods at six, who they got coming back, both those teams in this division. So I'm curious to see what happens going forward with um, both these two teams. So, okay, now um, when you look at the top, yeah, okay, now I'm gonna sign it off here, everybody here. Um, good luck to everybody in the white division this year. We're gonna keep a very close eye on the white this year. So we got, we got the red coming up next week. So 
We're going to sign off here. Take care, and good luck to everybody in the white this season. Take care, and see you next week, everybody. See you next week.